All right. We're going to skip around again and go back to section P4 to talk about polynomial inequalities. Now, these are just inequalities, so things involving less than, greater than, and polynomials. Now, the key to solving a polynomial inequality is to realize that polynomials basically have a very nice behavior around zeros. And if we can find out, you know, when is a polynomial positive, when is a polynomial negative, then it turns out we can solve any polynomial inequality. We start off by moving everything to one side, so the other side is just zero. And so this amounts to figuring out, we've got a polynomial, when is it greater than zero, or less than zero, or perhaps even equal to zero. Well, that's the same thing as saying, when is the polynomial above the x-axis, below the x-axis, or on the x-axis. Well, since polynomials are nice, smooth functions, really what we need to look at are, we first need to find the zeros. Where does it touch the x-axis? And then what we're going to do is we're going to just pick a test point and examine, you know, between these two zeros, is this function above the x-axis or below the x-axis. And we're going to do that at each interval in between each pair of zeros and to the left and to the right of the largest and smallest zero. So the idea is we get one side to be zero so we're finding out whether, you know, basically when is this above or when is the polynomial below the x-axis. We find out when is it on the x-axis. And when it's on the x-axis, everywhere in between tells us where the polynomial is, whether it's below or whether it's above the x-axis. So translating this into an algorithm to solve this, we start off by getting everything on one side. Which in this case is already done. So there's nothing to do here. For step two, we're going to find the x-intercepts. We're going to find out where does it hit the x-axis. And this polynomial, ignoring the inequality for the moment, this polynomial hits the x-axis when it's equal to zero. So we change the inequality to an equality. and solve. So in this case, we go from x squared minus 8x plus 7, and instead of greater than or equal to, we now switch it to just equal to 0. Now, we solve this, and this is quadratic. And in fact, this is a quadratic that's going to factor. If we look at this, the leading coefficient here is 1, the constant term is 7, and then multiply these together to get 7. Well, the only factors of 7 are 1 and 7, so we're going to have to use something like minus 1 and minus 7 in order to add up to minus 8. So that means we're going to factor by grouping by writing down 1 as our first coefficient, minus 1 as our second, 
minus 1x is our second coefficient, then minus 7x is our third, and then our constant term again is plus 7. And remember, this is now equal to 0, because we're finding out where does it touch the x-axis. And then everywhere in between, we're going to use to find whether it's above or below. So here, I look at the first two terms and find out what's in common, and do the same thing with the last two terms. In the first two, I can factor out an x, and leave me with x minus 1 from the first two terms. In the second, I can factor out a 7, but in order to get you know, two pairs of parentheses, both containing the same thing, in other words, in order to get x minus 1 as what remains, I'm going to have to factor out a minus 7. Minus 7 times x is minus 7x. Minus 7 times minus 1 is a plus 7. Because these two things inside the parentheses are the same, we can then factor them out. And pulling out x minus 1 in the first term leaves us with just x. In the second term, it leaves us with minus 7. So, now we've got it fully factored, we can set each factor equal to zero. And then solve each individual equation. So add one on the first equation, add seven on the second equation, and this, this isn't our solution, but it's where this quadratic hits the x-axis. So if we imagine this, at x equals 1 and x equals 7, we know the polynomial hits the x-axis. So we're trying to figure out, well, does the polynomial come from above, then go below, then go back above? Or is it, you know, above, then above again, then, you know, to the left, is it above or below? In between, above or below? And to the right of 7, above or below? So in other words, we're kind of dividing up the number line and saying to the left of 1, well, let's try something like x equals 0. We're trying to figure out is this polynomial positive or negative? Well, if we plug 0 in, we get 0 squared minus 8 times 0 plus 7. So I just plug it into the polynomial part. I don't worry about the, you know, greater than, less than, 0. I don't care about that. Right now, I just care about is this thing positive or negative in each region? And in this case, 0 minus 0 plus 7, I get plus 7. So that means the graph is going to be up here at somewhere at plus 7. So it's going to be above the x-axis, or it's going to be positive. The values to the left of x equals 1 are going to be positive. They're going to be above. Now, I'm interested in what about x values between 1 and 7. I can pick any x value I like. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to go easy on myself and pick something like x equals 2, because that's a smaller number, and it'll be easier to work with. And I ask myself, well, at 2, is it above or below? And that'll tell me whether the polynomial is below the x-axis or above the x-axis in this entire region. And I'm testing that with just one point, with just the point x equals 2. So when I plug in 2, let's see what I get. 2 squared is 4. 8 times 2 is minus 16. And then add 7. 4 minus 16 is minus 12. Adding 7 to a minus 12 is going to get minus 5. So 
I'm going to write these minuses below the x-axis because the y value is negative, hence the negatives, and a negative y value is below the x-axis, which is why I wrote it underneath the line here, underneath the x-axis. Now, there's one more area I want to check. I've done to the left of 1, between 1 and 7. Now I need to do to the right of 7. So I'll pick something like x equals 8 and plug 8 into the polynomial to find out is it above or below on this entire region. So I have 8 squared minus 8 times 8 plus 7. 8 squared is 64 and 8 times 8 is just 8 squared. So that's 64 again. Well, 64 minus 64 is 0, and 0 plus 7 is just 7. So I get another plus 7. So at x equals 8, the y value is positive, and positive y values occur above the x-axis. So now I look back at my original problem. I call this step the number line step. You go back to the number line to the x-axis and find out on each interval, you know, to the left, in between, and to the right of each x-intercept, is the graph above or below. Now we need to decide whether we're choosing positives or negatives and think about whether we include these zeros where x is 1 and x is 7 what I'll call the end points of these kind of cutoff points from one region to the other well to determine this I go back to the original do I want x squared minus 8x plus 7 do I want that to be positive or negative well, if it's supposed to be greater than or equal to zero, positive numbers are greater than or equal to zero, so I want this thing to be positive. So I'm going to choose the positive intervals, which are everything less than one, so all x values less than one, or all x values larger than seven. But the question remains, do I allow x to be 1? Is it okay if x equals 1? Well, if x equals 1, following this work back up, if x equals 1, this polynomial is going to be 0. Is it okay if the polynomial is 0? That's saying, is 0 greater than or equal to 0? Well, yes, it is. So it's all right if the polynomial is 0 which means it's all right if x equals 1 or x equals 7. So we can include these endpoints and put you know, the or equal to bars underneath. And that's our answer. And that's how you solve polynomial inequalities. Uh, off to the side here, I'll just real quick write out what this is in interval notation as an exercise of trying to recall how to, or not how to write, because you don't have to write interval notation, but it is a nice exercise in how to read interval notation. This is how we'd write it in interval notation. All x values from minus infinity up to and including one, or with a little union or cup symbol here, all x values from seven all the way up to positive infinity.